Hey, it's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it's Thursday. It's January 30th. This is going to be our chart lesson for today, and this is going to wrap it up for the week. Um, no chart lessons on Friday, so we'll be back again to do it on Monday, uh, but no chart lessons tomorrow. And um, just looking at today, um, I've gotten a few emails lately. People really struggling with with their trading lately, and you just have to understand that this is a uh, the volatility is extremely high right now. The market is extremely nervous. Um, we content, you know, we're still trading near all-time highs, and you know, there's just a lot going on out there right now. And uh, the market's been nervous, and it, especially when it starts to get around those all-time highs again. And so, uh, this volatility might continue for a little bit. Generally, the first of the year is some of the best trading uh, anyway. Usually, the market picks up in January. Uh, in the spring and, and really stays pretty strong usually until summer when you start to get a lot of uh, you know people on vacation and stuff taking vacations but uh, and then it'll pick back up in the fall generally through and then trade pretty good through uh, Thanksgiving and the holidays and it slows down again until the first of the year so that's kind of how the trading year goes but um, obviously you can have volatility at any time and you can have high volume at any time you can have the vice versa you can have low volatility and low volume at any time but uh it's been it's been this is not easy to trade uh i guess that's my basically what i'm trying to tell you if you're new to trading with all these reversals and up and downs and and you can see we're really getting a trading range here R really it started around uh one o'clock in the morning my time and we made our lows down here, and then we made a high maybe just after the opening. And we traded within that all the way really till 2 o'clock. So really the whole our entire trading day, we were in a trading range. Uh, we rallied strong at the end of the day, but, uh, you know, generally we're not going to be tra taking any trades out there. You might be managing a runner if you had a runner up through here. And, you know, if this thing's rallying like this, I would encourage you to hang on to your runner as long as you can if you got one. But... Um, I generally don't mark or take any trades after two o'clock. So uh, there's plenty of trades in here. There's probably other trades that you could mark green. I mean, this thing is just all over the place. And, you know, you get these huge rallies and then sell-offs and huge sell-offs. And, and the market just doesn't have any direction right now. So understand that. And the problem with the range is you had some relatively... Uh, strong support down here where it was generally in the same area early on but then notice we made a little higher bounce right here and we were off to the upside but across the top we're turning down at different places almost we had a little bit of consistency right here and then we've we're turned down at different places each time and, and the market's just all over the place and so it's not easy to trade that um so you know, don't beat yourself up if you're struggling. If you're doing well, that's great. Because if you can trade this when the, a normal market, when it slows down and the volatility is uh, more is more normal and uh, uh, the volume's down a little bit, it's much easier to trade. So if you can trade this, you can trade anything. But if you're struggling, don't beat yourself up. This is not easy. Um, the problem is, is it. The trades, the moves are quick and fast. So if you get it right, the money's quick and easy. But if you get it wrong, you know, your your trades over quickly as well. So um, this area right in here, you were better off just to stay out of that. That's the reason I marked that in the in the kind of uh, burgundy color. Uh, I mean, you can't make heads or tails of that. It's a shame that you couldn't get in this big move here, but you didn't, it's just no setup, at least not on my chart. So, um, but you just can't make heads or tails of that. You get whipsawed in both directions, so just stay out of that. Um, anyway, that's pretty much the big picture. You can see it. We traded down here. One, one thing I would say, we made this leg up, and once we made this higher low and started going higher again, that's not going to... That's going to be my first target. You can see we even overshot that. That's right back up at the top of the range, and we overshot that. But you can see the market corrected it real quickly. Only to decide that, hey, 
we're going back that way anyway. So uh, always look for your measured moves. They haven't been as consistent lately, but that's just because the market's mostly sideways. And even though you get some long trends here, the market's really just sideways. Um, I would call this a rally at the end of the day because, I mean, we, we started here at 32.45 and we closed on the very high at 32.90. So um, that's a 50-point move. I mean, that's that's not sideways. That's straight up, basically, with a lot of hiccups in there, too. Uh, but it got really consistent up here. So, yeah, if you had a runner or whatever, just hang on to that thing. Don't be afraid to hang on to a runner after 2 o'clock. Just don't, you know, just generally you don't want to take many, you don't want to enter many new trades after 2 o'clock. And the main reason is the market generally gets a little bit harder to trade after 2 o'clock. The volume usually slows down, and um, the big thing is if you make a mistake after 2 o'clock, you don't have time to make it back because you've only got an hour left before your broker will probably kick you out if you're not already out of the market. So uh, if you make a mistake here at 9 or 10 or even 11 in the morning, you got plenty of time to make it up. But if you make a mistake at 2 o'clock or after, you don't have any time. You know, you're, you're probably going to end up with a loser. So anyway, let me back out. We'll talk about the trades and we'll wrap the day up. We'll wrap the week up. I'm going to back on out of here so you can see this stuff. It's so hard to see. When you, you know, you can only get a small portion of the chart with all this volume. But anyway, 7 o'clock came right in here on this little move down right through here. And we had, I drew the trend line off the first two swings. We bounced here and we confirmed the trend line. And, um, bounce right off that uh, right off the trend line there it I didn't draw this but you see the main trend line you had a break and you got two legs down to a new low and if you can draw your short term one there and you had a break of it and a new low so everything had played out so when you get that nice bullish bar right off the key entry point that kind of confirms it um, I like going long there and this turns out to be a pretty good trade uh, you're generally better off to wait on your higher low, and you see we had one here, but horrible signal bar. I, you know, you can't enter that with that signal bar. If you had a good signal bar, by all means, you probably want to go along there, too. But if you took this, I mean, that's the thing I always tell people. These aggressive trades, if you're good at reading the chart and you want to take these, uh, you're probably going to have more losers, but the thing is you'll get rewarded, too. I mean, with you know, with more risk comes more reward. And when you catch these important lows like that, and um, you know that's when I really like to maybe take some of these more aggressive ones uh, on these important lows and important highs. Um, I don't know if I'd call that an important low, but the pro the thing is, it's at the key entry point, and this is played out. Notice you're moving down, you get an overshoot, which normally leads to a break. There you go. There's your close, the convincing close outside, and two legs down. That's perfect price action. And off it goes. And look, notice notice this too. You get two legs up. If you'd had a good signal bar there with that close outside, you being that far away from the EMA, I'd say take that trade. You get a lower high right here, but it's right back into the EMA. Too dangerous. This one actually broke higher and turned back down and went out here on my chart. If you had a chance to get in this a little higher and had room to get out, take that trade. Um, on my chart, you really can't take it. You're just asking for trouble if you do. I'll mark it green with a stipulation that, you know, and, and basically there's two measured legs. You got a leg correction and a second leg. But then you get a attempt to go higher again and it fails right at the uh, midline. So you, you can treat that like a failed second entry long. It's three attempts to go higher. Relatively bearish bar. I like going short there. And you're probably going to trap some longs there. So you'll probably be able to get a scalp out of that one for sure. But notice we make that low, you test it once, you test it twice, so when it breaks higher, when it breaks higher there, that's a uh, double test. But what, the reason I really like this one is you break lower and then you make a higher low with basically a double bottom there. And it actually breaks lower and turns, and you know you probably got people trapped there. Just go long. Um, this one is a little bit aggressive because it's still below the EMA, and it's not really a second entry long. So I marked it green. But there's your higher low, and that's a look at 
and that's really a failed second entry short because you can count that low first entry second entry i'd really just look at that as one leg up and i'd look for a, a minimum of a measured leg similar to that one up uh, but i like that trade right there and off it goes to the other side and if you catch this one you got another runner going there runs up Again, you get an overshoot, which normally leads to a close outside. It tries to make a new high. Um, there's actually a second entry long there, but the problem is you got a trend line working down. You're not really back to the EMA. This is really steep. That overshoot, um, I'd wait and see if you don't get another. If you can look, you can tell that. I mean, even though you got a second entry, that really looks like all one move down. So wait you're probably going to get a second leg similar to that. And there's your first leg. There's your second leg. It actually went a little further. So I like entering here because that's two legs back to the EMA. Now you got a true the two legs back, which is what second entries are really all about. Just the market moves in twos. So you get two legs one way and two legs the other way and two legs so that's what we're looking for and that's a second entry long right there um, and that's looks like strong and you really got a double test there you made the low you test it once you test it twice and you actually came back and tested it again there too actually your entry would be one tick above this bar and your stop would still go below that bar because that was when it became a second entry when it triggered above that bar but this is really your signal bar here so keep that in mind but hopefully you can see that even though there's a second entry there notice how that's all one move down and your trend line's all in play right there and you got a close outside a second leg down and then a little double test right there and it shoots up and makes your new high so now this is played out so now we may go lower here and notice it makes a lower high and that's a second entry short move up first entry second entry and it's a double test of this high relatively various parts a little congested but the reason um, is is because we're trying to get through that resistance and can't so being away from the EMA whenever you see res uh, congestion like that you got to be careful trading out of it. A lot of times you want to skip it, but when you can understand easily why it's there, then you may want to trade it. And here it's pretty understandable why it's there because there's a resistance up there and it can't get through and it's trying and then finally it gives up and drops. So you know if eventually it's going to, a market that can't go higher is going to turn and go lower. And that's exactly what it, even if it's going only going to go lower just to get another running start and maybe trap some people and try to reverse it, but it's, it's going lower and that's what happens here and you come back to the key entry point but you don't really get any more set any really good setups here the line really should be there now um, that's a really nice signal bar there's a failed second entry long right there but you got to go short right into all this uh, support notice it fails right there finds it again and that's a relatively bearish bar that does close below the low but you can see what would have happened to you here it goes it looks it may have you may have gotten five ticks out of that i'm not sure but it looks like a four tick failure and you would have got trapped and stopped out and your entry would have been 5850 and it went to 57. so it would have worked but you don't want to you just thoroughly don't want to risk that into that only th I do, the only thing I like about it is that big signal bar off the key entry point. And, um, and it does push through the, su the support and close below it. So it's one of those that you could, I could have marked green, but I didn't. There's probably others in here. There's several of them I, that you could probably argue for green. It's just so many trades. I don't, you know, if it's not a good trade, I'm probably not going to mark it, but I'll mark that one green. And then you do get a failed second entry short right here that's pretty tempting. And that is off a key entry point. Um, so that's another one. I, I just really don't like it because um, 
we've tried to go higher so many times here although this is a trading range by this time and you got a little failed break lower and you still got room to get out but you really need to get in a little closer getting in, in the middle of a range is um, just never very smart so that's another one you know you could argue for it to be green and then of course we hit the top turn down we do get an overshoot there um, but we never even check up here we run down you get a lower high right here and again it's right there where that support is but after pushing through once and then getting this little trap right here I like entering right there because we just came off the high up here we're probably heading back to the low if we can ever get through there and I would measure at a minimum I would measure that leg and expect and you can see we got about a measured leg and it corrected only to for the bottom to drop out of it again and this is one of those little areas where I just don't see any entries here you really want to take and I marked this one green notice how we bounce right off the key entry point um, I don't think that's a very good entry either there is a hidden second entry there leg down move up leg down and that is a key entry point um, so that's really tempting but if you drew your trend line up here you can see that one closing right inside it and that's dangerous and when it ticks higher especially being at that key entry point and turns down if it breaks lower right here there's a good chance we're going lower and there's always a chance you get another leg measured leg down too and that gives you a target way down here but this thing once it started going lower I think all the people that had gotten long had to exit and they start exiting and it runs all the way down here to the lower support from earlier you can see that it even pushes through momentarily you get a, a higher low here but it's you're still below the EMA it's a little bit dangerous you could argue for that one to be green you could even argue for that one to be green because you do have the break and a new low and this is the first break of the big two tier channel so even though we shot way down here there's still a good chance we go try to make a high you know retest the high so those are a couple more you could argue for green but then your true reversal comes here and notice how you push through the EMA pull back and you get a, re a really bullish bark that's an interesting bar because it opens on its high trades all the way down here but before it closes it trades all the way back and close it takes some buying pressure to bring that thing all the way back like that so if it breaks above that you're probably gonna at least get a scalp then it comes back to the key entry point and I mark this one green but this one's real close to being blue because this really looks like a double bottom and so that would be a failed second entry short at the key entry point so you could argue for that to be blue it could go either way I'll change it to blue it's real close to being green but it's it's you know you could say it's green and real close to being blue so it works either way and there is a midline in here but you know all of this is just a little too it's a little too aggressive but you can see that midline some of these bounces are off of that midline but there's not much room in there it still continues to work higher uh, notice you do get an overshoot here so it's a little iffy when it comes back right here uh, but when it gives you that double test right there notice you made that low you test it once you test it twice and it actually breaks lower there and then turns and goes out the other side just go along there um, you know we were looking for a possible break here or close outside because of that overshoot but we didn't get it the market just kept going so and it'll do that sometimes most of the time you'll get and and you can see we did close outside of it a little bit but it wasn't really an equal move but this is another one takes off and I'd be trying to get runners on these big long trends like this because several of these would have had you would have you could have caught a runner here here or here of course this one wouldn't have gone near as far as the others but uh, still could have caught one and again this thing broke lower turn and went out the other side it's almost like a little repeat right there off it goes and then suddenly it just turns and goes in the other direction of course you could look at this um, well, I was thinking we overshot the highs there but we didn't uh, but you got to be careful getting short here but when you get this when this thing uh, 
made this big bearish bar. Actually, when it broke below here, this is really the signal bar here. Uh, you might have let it break lower and let use a limit order there, but I mean that doesn't really help you here. It's you know just when it broke below right there, I would have gone short because that's a failed second entry long when it does that. Notice it didn't do much at all, and that confirms that key entry point. It's below the EMA. There's two legs down. You're going to at least get a scalp out of this thing, but it just kind of takes off. And it comes back again. And notice what you got here. You got two legs right here, but that's really one leg equal to this one. And you'll see that sometimes. So that's really two legs down. So I treated that like a failed second entry long as well. And look how bearish that bar is back to the EMA. And you got enough room to get out here. So I like that one. Didn't matter, you get another, you catch another runner here and this thing runs all the way down. Too congestive here, too far away from the EMA. Same thing here, this is all, this is really just all the same. I mean, there's just no, even though we're going higher here, you know, you're making higher highs and higher lows and you make a lower low and a lower high and then a high, I mean, it's just all over the place. There's just no way to really know um, Once you got this uh, trend line drawn here, then you might could figure it out a little bit. But even then, it looks, you know, first you look, you think this is the trend channel line over here, but it's not. It turns out to be way up here, and this is just a midline. So this, uh, you know, you were just better off to stay out of this because just really, there is a little double test right there. And but look how it turns down. You would have survived it, and it is a double test. So that's, you know, that's another one you could argue for. But it's, you know, you're really just stacking up sideways there. And it's getting really tight. And then we just kind of move up. And there's really no, it's just hard to trade that. You'll get whipsawed trying to find a trap or a failed you know, second entry or a failure. Uh, you're better off, in my opinion, just staying out of that. So... Uh, and unfortunately, you, ne you don't really get a, on my chart anyway, you don't get a setup. Notice right here that there's only two ticks in that bar. Um, and that's the first, and that is the second entry long. Notice you move back first entry, second entry. It's really all one move down. And if you draw your trend line, I mean, every fiber in my body says stay out of that. But that's a nice move up. You may get a second leg. So that's another one you could argue to be green. I mean, it's only two ticks. So, I mean, you're not risking a whole lot there. And look at the reward you get. Same thing up here. Now you got two big legs up. And look how far away you are from the EMA when you've been so close for so long. This thing's coming back. Uh, the, the key is getting your timing right. And that's a little aggressive. And then this is too bullish. And you don't get a reversal pattern it just the bottom falls out of it again so um this one was calculatable you could calculate this based off this trend line right here and uh dragging it up there to this high and when it hits there especially when this midline fit perfectly here um, there's not a whole lot of confirmation up here. It does look like it fits, but uh, when it turns down that far away from the EMA and it's looking like, you know, if you found this trend line and drug it up, then you may take that trade. It's a little aggressive, but that's such a bearish bar. Um, it's too bad that wasn't a good signal bar right there. And if you had a good signal bar here, by all means, go short right there because you've got plenty of room back and it's a lower high. And then we come down here and we just start bouncing again. And you get a failed second entry. Uh, you get a double test here is what you get. Notice that low once, twice. Really, you get a, you really had one here too, but this is too high. So I'd treat this like one. And this it really looks like a little repeat pattern of the other one I showed you that was back down here. It looks a lot like that. And then there's your higher low. That's the better place to enter on this one. Uh, but you might enter there if you want to be a little aggressive. Um, and then, and but see what happens. You you had a low there, and you tested once, twice, and you had a pretty good book, book, you know, pretty a relatively bullish 
signal bar, but your trend line's still in play down through there, and you know that's that's your only real key. But notice how it makes two legs down to a new low. So now you might be a little aggressive, but wait on you know this is the better one to wait on and look at it go. Again, you get a runner here. Then it pulls back with a failed second entry uh, short right off the EMA and, and another bullish bar. It actually broke lower and turned and went out the other side. Just go long right there. There's a higher low there. I didn't mark it, but I'd be okay with that one too. If you didn't enter this other one, enter right here on that higher low. And off it goes. Uh, you would expect to get a measured leg up like that one, but it finds resistance here. And when it can't get through there, um, and you get this, notice you try to go higher once, twice, three times, and this actually broke higher and turns. I'd wait for this to close. You Actually, if it did go higher and come back out on, on, on your chart, you can go short right there, but I'd wait on that and go short right there. And there's not a lot of room back to this trend line, but I'm not, a, you know, at this point, it's not 100% sure that trend line's in play. Um, and regardless, a market that can't go higher is probably going to go lower. And uh, notice it doesn't even get back to the trend line right there and turns up. And But I don't think you want to go long there. There's nothing really to set that up. But off it goes. And you actually get a higher low right here back inside the trend line. It's right before 2 o'clock. That's another one you might take. But uh, you've had a close and you got a new high, so it's a little risky, even though there's a higher low there, right there. And it is right at 2 o'clock, so, you know, you're always gambling on something when you enter that close to 2 o'clock. But that's what I saw today, and, man, that was a, another crazy day. It's been, it's just been a crazy week, really, a couple of weeks. So, anyway, um, the main thing to remember on days like this, anytime you're unsure, the right move is no move. Because if you're unsure and you take a trade, you're just gambling. And if you gamble in this business, you will be a loser. Gamblers don't make it in as traders. They just don't. You got to be calculated and you got to be, um, you know, we're, we're like a, you know, you're like a predator and you're hiding in the weeds and you're just waiting for the right prey to come by and then you're going to jump on it and grab it. And uh, if you try to jump at everything that comes by, you'll be chasing everything all over the place, basically. So uh, don't be a, you know, don't be running around chasing everything that comes by. Wait on the, wait on that perfect setup that comes and that you know what's going on and you've got a good read on it and you got a good setup. Don't be taking those guesses. Just stay. If you're having a guess, like right in here, which is all you really could be doing right in there is guessing. Um, just just hold tight until you see something that you like and uh, that that fits the read and um, you're going to be a better trader for it. So anyway, we're just 30 minutes and I like to keep these, you know, one time I, I was, these were going to be 10 minutes. And, I, you know, even on slow days, I have a hard time keeping it under 15. So um, the night's 30 minutes worth. And I still got to, pro, you know, process the video and get it uploaded. So I'm going to wrap it up. I uh, hope you had a good week. Uh, like I said, if you're if you're having a little bit of trouble on days like this, don't worry about it. Uh, this day could be hard for anybody. I mean, you know, there's points in here where you just don't know what's going on because the market's flip-flopping and moving in every different direction. And, there's no consistent turning places. And except the only thing we had really consistent were these lows down here. Past that, we didn't have anything really consistent. So um, anyway, I'm going to wrap it up. We'll be back again to do it Monday. Hope you have a good day tomorrow. Hope you have a great weekend. I'll see you Monday. This is Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com. And we'll see you next time.